Thank you guys. Uh, first of all, uh, I give honor to God for uh, having us here today, uh, gathered in Orlando, Florida. Uh, bring greetings uh, for my very lovely wife, Carol Brooks, as well as our four, most of the time, uh, wonderful kids. I have two daughters. Uh, my oldest daughter name is Brianna Brooks. Next in line is my oldest son, DeKalen Brooks. Uh, Darius Brooks is next, and our youngest, going on 30, is Dania Brooks, who absolutely runs our household. So I bring greetings uh, from my family, uh, obviously, to yours. And welcome to Florida. For those that are visiting here, uh, enjoy the weather, because we do every day, and we don't take it for granted, believe me. Uh, today, uh, our message was very simple. And I just want to check your memories. I know it's been a long day. Check your memories from when Jamie was up here. And his message was very simple. And I want to make sure that we all understand that before I begin my speech. Three words. What are those words? The first one begins with an R. Um, I'll tell you what. Everybody, y'all need to stand up and stretch. I know... I know, I know dinner is after my speech, so I'm going to hurry up so we can get to dinner, okay? But we can't get to those vittles until we understand the message. I want to make sure you got something to digest, all right, other than food. So what is our message today as an organization, as a company? What we gonna, if we don't leave here with anything else besides a full stomach, what are we going to leave here? What single message is that? Let me see everybody do it. Raise the bar. One more time. Raise One more time. Raise All right, some of y'all sweating under the armpits, so I won't ask you to do it again, including myself. Well, in order to raise the bar, we've got to start with some motivation. You've got to be motivated to do it. That single message was given to us in our championship season 2002. John Groove came in and challenged our defense. He said, hey, guys, what's going to be your motivation? What are you going to do to raise the bar? Find your motivation. Find your motivation. So before I answer that question, I thought about a good friend of mine, old Jim Bob Pickett. Look at Jim Bob. You can tell he rich. Look how long his cigar is. <laughs> rich man, Texas Allman. Good friend of mine I met years ago. Jim Bob had an interesting way of, of finding some motivation. Jim Bob, big house out in Texas. I, you know, I, I went there and I felt uncomfortable. It was too big for me. As Joe said, I lived in an apartment for eight years, so I didn't know how to act when I went to his house. I had to go back to a little small hotel, Holiday Inn. So stay at his house, big house. Look at that. That's his daughter. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> Old Sunshine Pickett. Boy. <laughs> She's beautiful. That's his daughter. So Jim Bob know his daughter. How many of you guys looking at that lady would think she's married? Huh? Many of you guys in here would think she's married. Well, she wasn't married at the time. So he was motivated to get her married. He said, I got to find something. Something about her just ain't clicking with the guys. So he's a big fan of The Bachelor, Bachelorette. So he flew in all these handsome young men, picked them up in a big limousine. I don't know how the criteria was, it, but you ended up in this limousine. He didn't tell me how he picked it. But man, look at that group of guys, huh? Well, they look like they ready to have a good time. You got a guy with a, a Budweiser. Look at this guy. He already like he had some. Red eyes, everything. <laughs> all right, but he picked this group of guys to go meet his daughter. So he brought them all back to the big house, OK? Took them in the backyard. He said, guys, before we start, I want y'all to come back in. Let's gather around this pool. And I'm going to tell you why I brought you guys here. Because none of them knew. They just accepted an invitation to come meet this wealthy oilman, this millionaire that own oil, all right? He said, hey, before we start this contest, 
He said, I brought y'all here for three things. All right? He said, man, I got a beautiful daughter. I'm going to introduce you guys to. Her name is Sunshine Pickett. Everybody looks, oh, my God, that's your daughter? Where's her mom? Because she sure doesn't look like you. <laughs> so she's strolling around, meeting the guys. Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome to our house. I hope you enjoy yourselves. So Jim Bob said, hey, man, in order to get that hand in marriage, all right, you guys are going to have to swim across my pool. All right, one by one. If you make it to the other side, in that pool now, we got some, some gators, crocodiles, even a snake on the other side. If you're able to come across that pool, man, you're the winner. If you don't want to do it, you can leave now. All right, but the winner, you get a chance to get my daughter's hand in marriage. You get a million dollars, or I give you one of my oil fields. So the guys huddle up, say, think about it. Now, you swim across that pool, and some of them are athletic. You get one of my oil fields, set yourself up for life. I'll give you a million cash dollars right now, or you can get my daughter's hand in marriage. And as the guys were thinking about it, they would huddle up. All of a sudden, they heard a splash. Everybody look, whoa, what didn't happen? Somebody didn't jumped in. Well, guess what? Old John and Ray, that's what they realized it was, and John and Ray jumps in. Man, they telling me, John and Ray, they don't know what happened. All of a sudden, it was dark. They looked up, and John and Ray was on the other side. And Jim Bob was standing there with that same cigar probably in his mouth. Congratulations, young man. Everybody standing around just couldn't believe what John and Ray had just did. I couldn't believe when he was telling me the story. He said, man, I finally did it. Nobody was more happy than my good friend, Mr. Pickett. He was motivated for something happened to his door, and he finally thought that he had it. He said, all right, John and Ray, congratulations. You're standing here wet, but we need an answer. Do you want the oil field? How many of you guys think he took that oil field? Raise your hand. One, two, yeah, you like me, oil. <laughs> Gas prices, all right? He stood there, and he thought. He said, okay, who want the cash dollars, tax-free? Don't even have to worry about reporting it. Probably could open up 10 or 15 buddies. <laughs> Who, how many of you guys think he took the cash? Raise your hand. Okay, a few more. <laughs> how many of you guys think he took that hand in marriage? <laughs> huh? Diamond ring already set. Well, John and Ray, he thought about it. He stood there. He said, this is a very hard decision. A very hard decision. He said, but you know what, Mr. Pickett? He said, I don't want any of those things. You know what I want? He said, sure, son, tell me. He said, I want the name of that SOB who pushed me in that pool. <laughs> so you got to be unexpected, man. Huh? Your motivation comes from anywhere. Huh? Your motivation could come from anywhere. The more that story, be unexpected. Go outside the box, find your motivation. John Gruden challenged us in 2002, raise the bar. Find your motivation to raise the bar. Be unexpected. How? Defensively score nine touchdowns. Score nine touchdowns for you Buccaneer fans. You knew how great our defense was over the years, but we hadn't scored touchdowns. The one missing element, and Coach Gruden found it. As he said, raise the bar. Score nine touchdowns, I guarantee you we'll be world champions. He said that, guys, on March 2nd, 2002. First day on the job as I head coach in front of the team. Score nine touchdowns. You'll be world champions. Be unexpected. And we did. Do things differently than they've ever been done before. As you relate that story and find your motivation, how are you going to do things differently than they've ever done before? Some of you have heard the saying, you know, good habits are hard to break. You want to develop good habits. You know one that's even better? Bad habits. They're even worse. Harder to break. As much as good ha habits are to develop, bad habits are even worse to break. So do things differently than they've done before. How are you going to do that in your stores? 
Senior leadership, how are you going to get that down to the guys that's working the floors? How are you going to set the tempo? What are you going to do differently? You got to find that motivation to do it. You got to find that driving force. You got to be that example. Be unexpected. To be unexpected, it involves taking risks that set you apart from the competition. How about old Johnny Ray? Huh? How did he set himself apart? He got pushed in. If it was his choice, you think he'd have jumped in willingly? Huh? Heck no. A risk had to be taken. Somebody pushed him in. What's going to be your risk? What's going to be your calculated risk that's different from the competition? A lot of our theme is centered around our competition these next few days. Renner Center errands. As I told Joe in the back, hey, I don't want the message to leave here today that we're slamming our competition. If anything, we respect it. You know why? Because we got to set ourselves apart from them. I was a part of a franchise that chased the champions. We chased the Green Bays of the world when I first got here. We chased the Green Bays. We chased the Minnesota Vikings. We chased the Chicago Bears. That was our competition. We had to have a measuring stick. And we caught pretty soon. They were laughing in 1995. Oh, they were laughing big time. i never forget a guard by the name of uh, Larry Williams, Washington Redskins, 1995, here in our stadium. Washington Redskins at the time, they 10 and 4. The Buccaneers at the time, we 6 and 8. They think they're going to the playoffs. We're out there busting our butt trying to beat them. He comes to the line of scrimmage and says, I don't know why y'all playing so hard. Y'all going to be watching us in two weeks. You know what happened? We beat them. You know what they were doing in two weeks? Watching other teams like us. <laughs> Did not go. So I know what it's like to be part of the chase. But we've got to set ourselves apart from the competition. There's some facts about it. Yeah, we're going to catch them. But don't get weary, man. Don't get weary, young ladies as we set ourselves apart. You gotta break away from the norm in order to do it. You think if we do the same thing that they're doing, we're gonna catch them? Do you think if we're doing the same things that they're doing, we're gonna catch them? No way. If you're doing the same thing that your competition is doing as a leadership team, you're not. We're gonna stay right where we're at. That's the old buddies. <laughs> the new one, unacceptable, period. No gray area. No gray area. We got to do things differently. Breaking away from a norm, accountability, all those words mean something now within our organization. Surprising your clients with something great and memorable. That's why I want y'all to leave here today. From every speaker that spoke, grab something that you can take back to your territory and deliver to your team as they can deliver to our clients. I don't like to say the word customers. I like to call them clients, because that's what they are, because we're serving them. They say customers are always right. Well, you know what? Clients are not always right. That's why I like to use the word clients. Some of y'all got that, some of you didn't. Customers think they're always right, but clients understand that they're not. Customers don't look for relationships, clients do. So if you treat the person that's walking in the door like a client, you're in the mindset of a developing a relationship. You're not treating them as a customer, you're treating them as a client. You're looking to serve your client because that client now will introduce you to other clients. What are you gonna do to give them something that's great and memorable? Great products, of course. You know what we sell in our stores? All the name brands. That's easy. But what are you going to give them that they can't touch, that they got to go talk about? Maybe it's how you sold them their product. Maybe it's how you greeted them. Maybe it's something you did. Maybe it's something in the store, how it's set up, that they want to share that experience to bring someone else there. A client, when they leave the door, they expect to see you again. They expect to talk to you again. They expect a relationship. A customer, 
they bounce around. That's why we want their customers, RAC and Aaron's, we want their customers to become our clients. Do you understand that? We want their customers to become our clients. Be motivated to do it. Doing things better than they've ever done before, you gotta formulate a belief system. What are your belief systems? Everybody's gonna be different, but yet we're gonna say the same principle. Put them all up here. You can read through them. I like to develop a belief system here that's a win forever. And I developed that as I followed Pete Carroll, head coach at the Seattle Seahawks. His philosophy is win forever. And I love it because that can relate to all phases of life. Winning brought us here together. That's what you have in common was a winning attitude. What do you have in common with Derek Brooks? I grew up in Pensacola, Florida, old country boy. I learned how to speak because I became educated. Went to Florida State University, got drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Professional football player, what do you have in common with me? Buddies. Win forever attitude, win forever. Working to maximize your potential on a consistent basis. In this business, you have to be consistent. You're either gonna be consistently good or consistently bad. But you gotta work to have a win forever attitude. You can't get tired doing the same things. You can't. As I said before, as you develop good habits, you do it on a consistent basis. Knowing you're gonna win, that's maximizing. Performance, confidence, trust, focus. That's leadership. That's me, that's you in this room. That's how we get that message to our guys that's on the floor, to our young ladies on the floor, to our men and women that's delivering the product to our customer. So many times I've seen a great experience by a customer in the store get turned off because of the presentation when the furniture is being delivered. How many calls have you gotten Hey, they didn't hook this up right. They didn't put this where I want it. They didn't screw this in. My bed is broke. How many of you guys have heard those comments? That destroyed the experience. So we must understand. We must understand that the experience as a client, it leaves the store. It goes all the way down to our guys that's setting up the furniture for our customers. We got to understand that those guys those young ladies in some stores have to feel even more important than you. They have to. They got to understand their role. They got to understand the win forever, knowing you're going to win. They got to have confidence, trust, focus, that you believe in them finishing the deal. Most people think that when you're servicing a client, when they make that payment, they stroke that check, that the experience is over. No, 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 that's the experience of just beginning. They got to know that you trust them to close the deal. The deal is closed once they receive their first, that one deal, but you got to have somebody to do it. Moving on, practice is everything. And how you guys relate to that, what's your environment? What's your environment in the store? I heard, I heard Mark speak about it in terms of what, what a creative environment you're going to have in your store. What are you going to let your employees get away with? What tone are you going to set in your store? Starts with you. If you're a manager of a store or you're a leader that never shows up, never talks to your staff, what kind of environment is that when you ask them to do something? Are you the type of person, as a leader, when there's a hole to be dug, are you going to tell somebody else what to do or are you going to start the shovel and you start digging and they see you digging and they get the message, and they grab a shovel, and they start digging too. That's what I mean by the creative environment. What sales environment? What sales environment? The stores that I'm involved in in Pensacola, when I showed up there, walked in, the customer saw me, oh, say, Derek Brooks is real. I volunteered, hey, guys, y'all need someone to go in the delivery truck? 
I'm here to get my hands dirty. I'm here to finish the deal. Think about it. How many times have you done that? From an attitude of humility. That's the environment I want them to create to know that I'm part of the team. Competition. Oh, that's our central theme today. But internally, this, this is so true. This is healthy competition. You're either competing or you're not. Pretty self-explanatory. You're either getting better or you're not. You're never going to stay the same. Our business is a competitive business, but it's a healthy competitive business. Your, your people on the floor, your men, your sales force, your corporate office support, we all got to be in the mindset of competition. We got to understand that every day, as Jamie liked to say, every day somebody's eating lunch. Either we're eating out of their lunchbox or they're eating out of ours. But somebody's going to eat every day, period. Period. We're not selling for the crumbs no more, ladies and gentlemen. We want part of the entree. I'm not saying it has to be steak and lobster, but it don't have to be chitlins either. <laughs> For everybody down south, they understand what chitlins are. You northerners, I don't know if you know that. <laughs> We're not selling for less, man. You're either competing or you're not. As I said before, do things better than you've ever done before. That formulates your belief system. It's that simple. Do things better than you've done before. We got to do things better if we've done before. I think the leadership team has done that. They've gone out and provided the tools for us to succeed. They've showed a winning attitude. They've got us to this point. Now, everybody has to take us further. We can't leave one person behind. We're only as strong as our weakest link. As a company and as an individual owners, franchises owners, we're only as strong as our weakest link. That's why I bring up the men and women that's delivering the product. They're representing you. They have to feel that they're important. They have to know that that environment they're setting is to a client, that we want them to share that experience to come back. Setting yourself apart from the competition. Got to be more than lip service. Got to be more than lip service. Easy to say, hard to do. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some work. But if you wasn't willing to work, you wouldn't be sitting in this room. I was part of a team. We had to ask ourselves, how are we going to set ourselves apart from our competition? And Coach Dungey gave us two slogans. It was no excuses. No explanation. That's how we're going to set ourselves apart. We're going to develop good habits by getting better every single day. Understand that we're competing every single day. We're not going to be 0 and 26 again. We start out 0 and 6, 0 and 7. We was on our way. We were questioning that, Coach. Oh. But he kept reaffirming, guys, keep believing. Believe in what we're doing. Believe in this defense. It's going to work. You just got to trust the system. You got to trust that we know what we're doing. Give it a chance. How are you going to set yourself apart? I come up with this, and I know this is a Seattle slide because the coach that I was talking with this week, he was a former coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Now he's a head coach in Jacksonville. But we talked about the three principles that guarantee success. One. A commitment must be made. The first principle of guaranteed success, any walk of life, whether it's your faith, first and foremost for me, my faith in Jesus Christ, business, your family, whatever it is, these principles work. A commitment must be made. What are your commitment to your individual stores? What is your commitment to the corporate company? The corporate company, what's our commitment to our franchisees and our support? A commitment must be made. In order to succeed in anything, you got to make a commitment. And I always challenge everybody to this. 
write them down. Because when you write them down, you take ownership of it. I can't ask y'all to raise the bar if you're not writing it down. Test question. What three words are we going to leave here today if we don't leave here with anything else? What is it? Raise the bar. Boy, you're some smart people. You are some smart listeners. In order to raise the bar, we got to make that commitment. Commitment must be made. If we're going to raise the bar, we got to make a commitment to do it. It has to be more than lip service. Joe talked about this. Strategically placed. I made a commitment to Joe Gazzo, Jamie Sladden, and Miss Sladden. I said, I represent your company. You don't need a contract. I'll never embarrass your company. You'll be proud to say you was my partner. We said that in 1995 when Jamie didn't even know who I was. <laughs> Thank God for Joe. <laughs> he knew I wasn't letting him get away with that one today. But think how powerful that is. When you make a commitment, you do it on a handshake deal. You do it on a hand, that's trust. That's a commitment. Back then when none of this was possible, I don't even know if the family had even thought of where we at today. 18 years ago, I don't know what the vision was. I just know at that particular time, I shook his hand, I said, hey, I'll be your partner. All I ask you guys to do is give me two couches and two beds, <laughs> one for each room and a couch for the living room. Matter of fact, I had a little 16-inch TV until Jamie brought me a big one three years later. <laughs> he said, our partners can't be watching this. <laughs> All right, give me what you want. Give me a used one. He said, no, you're getting a new one. He brought me a new one. I took it back and got a used one. <laughs> but for me, <laughs> that's what it's about. Commitment must be made. Handshake means something to me. What's it going to mean to you when you shake your partner's hand, when you shake your employee's hands? What are you going to shake? Sometimes don't even refer to them as employees, which we know that's what they are. Call them a partner. See how that changed their attitude. You're my partner. Because what you do is going to affect whether you get paid, I get paid, we move forward. Treat your employees as your partners. That's what they are. As I said before, I gave you the example of our delivery guys finishing the deal. Let's start calling them clients, not customers. Next, set, next principle, guaranteed success. A plan must be laid. A commitment without a plan equals nothing. When you make a commitment, you write it down, you pray over it. Now you come up with a plan. A plan must be laid. A commitment must be made. A plan must be laid. What's your plan on that commitment? How are we going to get to 500 customers? First, we got to get to 351, 352. I should have been corrected there, but nobody's catching me. I said customers. You should have said, Mr. Brooks, they're clients. How are we going to get to 500 clients? How are you going to lay that plan out? You make that commitment. If it's 500 clients, if it's 400 clients, whatever that number is, you got to have a plan to it. How are we going to incentivize our employees, our partners, that they stay motivated to do it? Corporate office support. What's our plan for our franchisees and growth? How are we going to support them? Got to mean something to us. Everything has to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, there's no self-evaluation for corrections. No part of this, I say, is guaranteed success. With, with even success, we have a plan. Now we can measure our failures and make those corrections. Recommit. Redevise a plan. But in order to do it, in order to grow from our mistakes, we got to have a foundation laid, and that's what these principles are. 
A plan must be laid with every aspect of your life. Talked about Coach Carroll laying out a game plan for Seattle. At the time, this is right before the New Orleans game when they upset New Orleans two years ago up at their place. The final principle of guaranteed success, a price must be paid. Wow, that's huge. That is huge. Coach Gruden challenged us in 2002, as I said before, score nine touchdowns. We made that commitment, we're gonna score at least nine touchdowns. How are we gonna do it? We were gonna practice turnover drill after turnover drill. We was gonna catch interceptions, pick up fumbles, strip the football, score. Don't fall on the way to the end zone. <laughs> opportunity after opportunity. Our offense, how are you gonna support the defense scoring nine touchdowns by not turning the ball over, keeping the games close? protecting leads, protecting the football. It's an investment that everybody needed to make. That was the plan. What's the price? What's the price we pay? Lifting harder, running harder, drill after drill after drill, film study. Find something in our competitors that they don't see. Find something, as I said before, that's gonna set us apart for our competition. Identify their weaknesses, so we can exploit our strengths. That's the price you gotta pay. You gotta dig into your client base. Get to know them. Get to know their birthdays. Get to know their children. Target new clients. Carry the business card everywhere. Cold call. Friend raise. I'm, in the, I'm not in the business of fundraising. I raise friends, friend raise. Take advantage of the relationships you have. Be in a competitive mindset at all times. That's the price you must pay. If you gotta come in earlier, come in earlier. You gotta stay later, stay later. Find something to set you apart from the competition that you're gonna pay the price to find that one little crack in the door that's gonna give you an advantage. Find that crack in the door that's gonna guarantee your success. Set your foundational principles. Price must be paid. Easy to say, hard to do. Hard to do. But if you wanna succeed, you gotta do it. The price you may pay may be a failure that you gotta learn from. You may have to admit it failed. We're not perfect. Some of the greatest successes come through failure. Some of my greatest successes have come through failure because there was a recommitment, there was a different plan laid, and there was a bigger price to pay. Three principles of guaranteed success. That's the Seattle Seahawks, but I can put any color up there. I can put the Baltimore Ravens this year. The game of football, a price must be paid in order to be a champion. Championship attitude. And I leave you guys with this. Excuse me. Beautiful picture of Sal. <laughs> as I close with this, guys, I, I thought of something as, as I said, man, as I come over, I'm talking about commitment. I'm talking about accountability. I want to close out. I want to give them something to leave here as they commit to raising the bar. And I thought about it. How many people understand what commitment is? How many people understand what it is? Raise your hand if you understand what commitment is. Well, everybody's hand didn't go up, so I'm going to give you an example. You got a chicken and a pig, woke up early in the morning, 
Chicken on one side, pig on the other. Some of you may have heard this, some of you may not. But if they getting up early, they walking down the street, they smell some good food. Somebody's cooking a breakfast. And they say, man, that breakfast is smelling so good. Let's go over there and be a part of it. Okay, the pig said, okay, to the chicken, okay, let's go over here and be a part of it. Let's see what they're having. So they walk over, look up, and the guy said, man, right, you guys come here to eat? He said, sure, come on in and eat. What are you guys having? They said, we're having bacon and eggs. <laughs> pig said, whoa. The chicken said, where are you going? He said, man, let me tell you something. As we go into here to join this breakfast, from your standpoint, it's participation. <laughs> but from my standpoint, it's a commitment. <laughs> so you go on in and you participate, I'm going to leave because I'm not ready to commit. <laughs> That's what commitment is. It's all or nothing. It's all in or it's all out. If you're all out, you just participate. I did not say a guaranteed principle of success is a participation must be made. A commitment must be made. You must be that type of person that's going to be all in to make that commitment. You got to be motivated to be part of that success. Find your motivation. Find your motivation. Oh, John and Ray found his as he swam across that pond with somebody pushed him in. Mr. Pickett found his motivation to get his daughter by bringing all the bachelors there. What's your motivation? I found our motivation in 2002 when we were challenged to score nine touchdowns. And the follow-up to that story is an individual meeting that Coach Gruden had with me that I'll leave you guys with. That championship season, before the season even started, he brought me into his office individually. And he said, Derek Brooks, the great Derek Brooks, you've made a ton of plays here. You're one of the best, if not the best, linebacker in the league. But being the best linebacker in the league is not going to win us a championship. Being the best linebacker in the league has got us a lot of wins. But if you be the best player on defense, be the defensive MVP, Guarantee you, we'll have a great shot of winning the Super Bowl. I said, Coach, whoa, that's a, I said, time out, Coach. That's an individual award in a team sport. He said, no, it's not. He said, it requires of giving more of you to make sure that your team succeed. And if you give more of you, they're going to follow. If you become the best in the league and we score nine touchdowns doing it, our chances of being world championship and wearing a ring goes out of the roof. I couldn't have told you guys on March 3rd we had that meeting that I projected that we would win a Super Bowl. I left that meeting rededicating myself to my team to give more of me so our team can succeed. And the Lord blessed us to win a championship in 2002 as I won defensive MVP. So I didn't have to feel any different about winning an individual award in a team sport because our team won the ultimate goal that year, and that's a championship. So as you raise the bar, as you leave here raising the bar, understand that mentality, that we're going to have a championship franchise. We're going to be the best sales nation we can be because individually we're going to raise that bar because everybody holding that bar up it gets a little higher. If you're trying to hold it by yourself, you're going to lose strength. But if everybody that's part of the Buddies franchise is holding that bar, it's going to rise higher and higher and higher. And pretty soon, we're going to have some more dynamite, and we're going to keep blowing up the competition. And as we blow up the competition, as you saw earlier, certain blessings fall out of the sky that we can all use. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. And one final time, let's go. Everybody, one, two, three. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. It's been my pleasure, guys. Thank you.